Hey there, fans of brotherly love wrestling. It is I, Vic Delicious. Philly's own, the Mecca here. It is the real McCoy, J D X Justin D Xavier. And it's your man, CD, the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels. Hello, boys and girls. This is your old friend, RJ City. Hey there, brotherly love wrestling. Bill Carr here. Hey everyone, this is two-time guest Wheeler Yuta. Two bozos from Philadelphia flapping their gums about pro wrestling this, pro wrestling that. Which is not that unique in the grand scheme of things yet. You are in for a treat because you're tuned in to Brotherly Love Wrestling. Philadelphia, are you ready? This is Brotherly Love Wrestling Podcast, your first stop for everything professional wrestling. So sit back and enjoy wrestling talk at its finest with your hosts, Larry Hall and Joe Corrado. Welcome, everybody, to Brotherly Love Wrestling. Uh, as you can see, well, if you're watching, as you can see, I have no Joe with me today, but someone who has been around almost as long as Joe has with our show is joining us. You've only heard his voice if you started way back in the beginning. He's been on our show multiple times, but now we finally get to see him. And from across the pond, Eggy joins us. Eggy, man, it's great to finally see you on our show and good to talk to you again. It's f great to be back. <laughs> so, uh, like we said, no Joe today, a uh, little family issues, but uh, we wanted to sit down with Eggy. Like we said, about a month or so ago, we're wrapping up the show and we could not finish the show in April without at least having Eggy on one more time. Granted, we talk to him on social media a lot, and but to have you back on the show and talk some wrestling, talk some current product, a uh, lot going on. I mean, Jesus, since the last time we had you on, it, I mean, it might have been pre-COVID at this point. Wow. Um, but so I know uh, I want to start with some of the hottest stuff going on, and I know you haven't watched it. We're going to kind of... This McMahon documentary, and we don't have to go into a lot of the negative negative things about it. I just, looking at it, the one thing I took from it is there's a back and forth narrative that they run. And you watching wrestling as long as you have, and loving wrestling as long as you have, watching these guys, and on the documentary, you had Hogan, you had Cena, you had Cody, uh, Tony Atlas, there's names, I mean, obviously Hunter and stuff like that, Shane and all that. But the one constant, uh, Taker is another one, that everyone kept saying he's like a father figure. And then you see they do the part where Shane had his match uh, against Taker and he jumps off the cage, uh, the Hell in a Cell, onto the table oh. and then he comes back. And they have this moment where he hugs them and it's like he, uh, he's been waiting for that his whole life. And you see a lot of these people keep saying he's a father figure. And Bruce Pritchard does an interview and talks about how this man paid for my wife to have the best treatment in cancer that she possibly could. And she only had four years. And yet that was 24 years ago. You see all this stuff said like that. And how great a guy he is to a lot of people in that company. But then you have the other side of it. You have this stuff with Janelle, uh, Janelle Grant and every bit of controversy that has happened with the female referee claiming it. And the stuff with Ashley Mazzaro, who, who took her own life and everything that's wrapped up in it. It was hard to look at it and go, can someone be this father figure, this great guy, but then also be a piece of shit, misogynistic you know, predator. You know what I mean? Like, how do you look at oh. that and, and try and make sense of something like that? Well, it's interesting. Good point that you make, but I think it comes back to, as you know, I was a big DC fan, big DC <laughs> comic book fan. Yeah. There's a line in the Batman versus Superman movie of, 
absolute power corrupts absolutely. Mm -hmm. If you're going to have this power, it seems to sense that majority of people at one point will either act on the absolute power and influence he has for his ways or will not. You've seen my, we're in the age of political and other stories in mainline media of people abusing the powers and influence that they have. So realistically, that thing, and also when you get that high, it's automatically, you're not going to like the word no. Yeah. And even with storylines and the character wise, does he ever have the word no said to him? Good point. You know, he's never going to have no said to him in the character life. He's not going to have it in real life. Mm -hmm. All this scene since, when was WrestleMania 3? 87? Three, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So re realistically, that was the year I was born. So 30, nearly 37, 37 years, he's never had no said to him and he's always been successful. Relatively yeah. successful, and he's always he's gone from being a millionaire to a billionaire. That's not yeah. bad, is it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, the concept. And yeah. also, the the aspects of being a father figure. If you also think about it, you said Cena. Uh, who else did you name? Sorry, Undertaker, Taker, uh, Cody, Austin. Relatively, so if we take away Cody, everyone that said he was a father figure, realistically, he made them a millionaire. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you know, it's it's very it's it's very helpful, you know, to be a father figure if you've just paid me a million dollars in shirts sales. <laughs> yeah, it's a good point. It's and then though, look, and even and Brett, that was the other one, Brett Hart. Brett Hart said it for a long time. I, you know what I mean? I bet he doesn't say. It. I've not seen the documentary, but I bet he doesn't say it now. Uh he. You would think with the way Bret Hart is and how Bret Hart bitter. is, yeah, yeah, bitter is a very good word for it. Um, he doesn't go after Vince like I thought he would. Like he does Goldberg and he does a lot of these other people that he absolutely Sorry. can't stand. Oh, oh, I, thought, I thought you meant he did Goldberg in this documentary. No, 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 he did, no. No, but I'm just saying like the way, the way he is, like you said, bitter, he doesn't come off as bitter towards McMahon. I mean, and look, obviously they buried the hatchet. They had that match at Mania, um, and he's been back several times since then. But he, even he looked back on Vince favorably in his interviews in the documentary. Our curiosity, is there anyone in the documentary that kind of had kind of like a, mid, a kind of middle of the road career? Um, if you would call, see, I don't even know if you would call it middle of the road, but Tony Atlas, I mean, Tony because Atlas was, right. wasn't middle of the road, but he's tag team. No, champion. but you know, compared to Austin, Rock, yeah. Taker. Nick. Yeah. Tony Atlas is a hall of famer, Does but it? he's not top level mm. hall of famer like those guys. Yeah. Cause I was just, I was just curious. Does that kind of talent have a different, cause they wouldn't have made the millions. They wouldn't have made a vendor. They wouldn't have been on top. Did they have the more vested interest Well. He might be a dickhead, but he's done a lot for me and my family, like Bruce Pritchard said. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're like they were the big names, is basically what it was. It was the the bigger names in the industry. Tony Atlas, that kind of that kind of took me back when I saw that he was involved. But I mean, mm. that that was one thing Tony Atlas said, I think that a lot of people raise a lot of eyebrows. Is that like he flat out said that he hates Pat Patterson because Pat Patterson in the back touched his pecker <laughs> like what out of his mouth that's the words he said like and you know pat batterson is universally loved in the wrestling business uh and obviously not to fans but for the most part he was openly gay you know what i mean oh. to everyone in that company until what uh, how many years before he died you know what i mean did we find out that pat was openly gay but like or what well, came out to the fans that were gay um but yeah tony that was one thing i know came out a lot of people were talking about with tony atlas saying that about pat patterson yeah i, I can't really comment really because i really watched the documentary because and the netflix show because the clips i saw on like twitter or x whatever it's called now it all just seemed like reaction of attitude and stuff like what it austin man, it's like 
Have you ever have you watched any of those um dark side of the ring documentaries? Um I've seen clips because I'm not sure what the, they would be on the channel over in this country. That's why yeah, that's also I've why I yes, I wasn't sure, you know what I mean, over there like Vice mm. Vice TV. I mean Vice TV is not even I mean it's a, a okay channel here, but it's not some big channel that everyone has, so I wasn't sure if Vice TV was available where you are. No, I've I've never gone through and seen Vice TV. Okay. Whether it's on different things like I think AEW uh, is on like ITV. Okay. It's like it's not it's a and I don't even think it's not the main ITV channel. It's like the main ITV on like our pay subscription thing. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, Vice TV with that dark side of the ring is always the controversial, controversial stories that happen in pro wrestling, mm-hmm. and it seemed like this was a higher budget. Vice TV compilation is be- the right. best way I can put it. It was like, all right, well, here's the clip from Montreal's Crew Job, and here's the clip from like, and it just, it was from when he when he bought it from his dad, took over the took over the territories, and then literally just WrestleMania era, beginning of WrestleMania era into the new generation into attitude into. Ruthless aggression, you know what I mean? And all the way up uh, until he stepped away. And it was more like, and then look, and this is what this documentary was. Before that, all the controversy came out and all the sh- and the indictments and all that shit, this was a career retrospect on Vince McMahon. This was everything that had also, happened. Also, this to him. wasn't this wasn't about the scandal. This was a career documentary yes. series, and then it just hit the scandal at the right time. Exactly. Uh, that's why. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the last, literally, like, I'm watching, so it's six episodes. They're about 52 minutes until the last two, I think, are an hour, four, hour, five. And I'm watching them, and I'm like, all right, this is, for fans like me and you, who have been watching as long as we have, you know all this. You Like, anyone who's a fan, I've seen a lot of people reacting the same mm-hmm. way. It was like... We already know all this. This is okay. It's more for people that know who Vince McMahon is, know what he does, but doesn't know anything about what we grew up watching and all the stories that came out. Someone said it. um, I can't remember who it was I was listening to on the radio uh, was saying that what this was, it it can't be compared to the, the last dance that they did with Michael Jordan and that documentary because Michael Jordan and the Bulls was this thing that you've seen on the court, but this figment of your imagination of everything that happened off the court. Like all the stories that the rumors that you may have heard here and there, you didn't know. And then you watch it and you get to see the home video. You get to see these things happen. You get to see Rodman not showing up for practice during the finals because he's in WCW. You get to see these things you get to see Jordan pushing people and making things up in his head to to win. You get to see these things that you never knew about, you never heard about. Where this, with Vince, you knew this. You knew what happened with the steroid trial. You knew what happened with the Benoit. You knew what happened with Owen Hart. You knew the screw job. You heard and knew stories, and you knew everything already. So for us watching it, it was like, yeah. Okay, yeah, I knew that. Like, it's nothing that was like, holy shit. Like, you kind of knew everything. The last episode and the last 40 minutes, 35 minutes, give or take, is where the new stuff happened. The indictments and the text messages from McMahon to Janelle Grant. And so, like, in my head, I was like, God damn, I could have saved myself a lot of time if I just would have turned on the last episode had I known that. I already know 95% of what I'm watching the six hours. Now I like going back and watching stuff I've lived through and, and watching and reliving it again. So it really didn't bother me, but I know fans that were mad that were like, I wasted five and a half hours of something I could have watched 30 minutes of, but I, I, but I mean, all in all, the one thing I took out of it was like that the realization I came to was, man, I guess you can be this loved and and 
people have your back, but also be a complete piece of shit as a human being, both can be true. Oh, yeah. You know Definitely. what I mean? That, that's, I think that's one thing. Especially if you're that rich, you're that powerful. Yes. That much money with that much power. As, my, as, as we spoke before, it's no surprise that Amanda Creep, when he's had, he's kissed on camera Stacey Keebler, Tony Wilson, Trish Stratus, Sable. <laughs> yeah, the list goes on and on. Um, yeah, it's, it's that's not a shock. No. Uh, so another one, some of the things that I did want to talk about, I wanted to, uh, that because like I said, me and you talk weekly, if not a little bit more on Instagram and messages back and forth. And one of the things we talked about a couple weeks ago uh, that came out, we talked about Kevin Nash because Kevin Nash had mm. uh, on his podcast. And I list, like I said, I listened to Kevin Nash's podcast, click this every Monday and he was kind of talking about the last pay-per-view Cody versus Solo and that long entrance that Cody had. And he kind of uh, criticized how it was just like, just go to the ring, go to the ring, stop with the signing autographs and smiling. And yeah, you're the baby face, but this guy's going to kick your ass. And the old school mentality of, you know what I mean? The baby face home is your fist. Like you should be ready. I did want to see what you think of a guy like Kevin Nash, who's was obviously a star in WWE and WCW hall of famer made a lot of money through wrestling and him with his critique of today's wrestling. Firstly, the, I saw the critique about the entrance and uh, getting off the bus with his dog, Zenon yeah. Anderson, with yeah. the, he said about the putting the mask on. Out of curiosity, WWE, what does the E stand for? Entertainment. Mm -hmm. It's not boxing. Yeah. No, so it's it's not it's not real. Yeah. It, you know, he could just go to the ring and then fight, and then that's it. It's entertainment. Yeah. It's like, realistically, as soon as someone gets Irish whipped in wrestling and they hit the rope to come back, it's fake. It's entertainment. Yeah. No one in a bar fight grabs someone behind the hand and tries to whip them to the other end of the bar. It doesn't yeah. happen. And wait for them to come it's back. Just, yeah. <laughs> I'll wait for you to come back, dump my punch, and try to throw me <laughs> over a table. It doesn't happen. Yeah. It's just entertainment. Yeah. There's a lot of things. Why why does did the Undertaker take like 25 minutes to come to the ring? And wait for the pyro to come through. It's just entertainment in that sense. Yeah, but a guy like Kevin Nash knows this. You know what I mean? He knows this. This is this is not new information for a Kevin Nash. But he also now knows this and has a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. It's time. He's, he's got to he's not take uh, not to kill time, but he's got to make content. Yeah. Well, I mean, the one, just... the one thing that me and Joe uh say with Kevin Nash is because we met Nash and and Hall and Pac and all those guys at a at a con here in Philadelphia. And we got we were standing in front of the table waiting to meet Kevin Nash. And I'm sure we've we've told this a bunch of times on the show. We got to talk and have a conversation before we even got to him. Because we were across the table and then we had people with to walk around. But like talking to him, listening to him talk business and talk the business and talk what he like he's just He's all about the money. And which, look, I mean, it it's, again, the business is what I said. Like, that's what it is. Mm. It's still a job at the end of the day. Regardless of how we look at it, that's their job. It's what they get paid to do. It's mm. what the, the paychecks are for. So I know a lot of, there's a lot of people in the business that don't like Kevin Nash because he's so blunt about, being there to make money. And I, I did it. This is to make money. I agree with a lot. There's not a lot with Kevin Nash. When he talks about wrestling, you know, he, talk, he talks about politics a lot too. But when he talks about professional wrestling, there is a lot I agree with Kevin Nash about. 
because he does talk about AEW a lot. And there are things that he may go overboard with when he talks about AEW and a little overly negative, just like my partner on this show. But Mm. uh, there is a lot that I agree with, a lot of old school mentality. And I think you agree with that as we talked about AEW here and there. The storytelling for most people, for a lot of older people anyway, who've watched wrestling for a while, is the most important part. And I think WWE is finally, with Hunter at the helm, taking the time to invest in storytelling. Yeah, I think the difference between AEW and WWE is one is a wrestling show, one is a show, a television show with wrestling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like that, The Walking Dead was, it wasn't a zombie show. It was as the zombies were on the peripheral. Yeah. Of a story about human beings and survival. Yes. Realistically, does CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre, does it really matter if they have a match? No, uh, I I, I mean, not not really. You want to see them fight, you don't want to see them dislocks. Yeah. The takedowns, you'll see the fight. Yeah. Whereas AW, it's kind of like look at the dream match between Okada from Japan, say, and I don't know, somebody from AW, like um, MJF. Mm-hmm. The match is what would draw the person, the actual in ring match, rather than WWE, it's putting the match in the ring. Getting, yeah, it's the, it's the journey to getting into the ring. Mm hmm. More than it is the ring itself. So I'm glad you said that with AEW because so and something that I was very excited for and uh, because of the history and the story that is already there, it was tailor made to be very, very good is Nigel McGuinness and Brian Danielson. Now, this has been going on for plus 20 plus years when they started their feud in Ring of Honor. I heard a lot of people very critical about the build because you only gave them five or six television shows until from when it was announced to when the match actually happened. My, my thing is I agree with the people that were saying not long enough. When you have a a feud that's 20 years old and you have the story of Danielson who made it and Nigel who should have made it, but, had had medical issues and never really got his shot on the bigger stage as WWE goes. I feel like that story could have been told a lot longer and put a lot more effort into telling that story. Well, my opinion with that is one, you say that the feud is 20 years started 20 years ago. How many people, how many people really know that it happened in Ring of Honor? That's my biggest problem. That's my biggest problem because the company that had the match has the tapes. You have the history in your hands. You can tell the story. You can show 10-minute clips. You can do what... And you have three shows. And not only that, two of those three shows... Well, three out of the three, it, depending on who you talk to, two out of the three shows do not get really great ratings at all. Respectable ratings, not even respectable ratings. I'll give, I'll give, I'll give dynamite respectable ratings. Rampage and collision don't even get respectable ratings. So if you're good, you could promote Wednesday that on Friday, we are going to have a clip from one of their wars and we want to catch people up. We want to show you why this is important. And then, then again, on Saturday, Hey, well, we have this on, on, on collision that will show you this because if AEW is the spot for pure wrestling, that all we want to do is show you the dream matches. All we want to do is show you the five star Meltzer specials. If you want to do that, then do it. Then show them the classics that people who grew up on it and watched it and were invested in it, that you can get this, this fan base invested in it. But instead you do two packages with Nigel McGuinness talking, you don't even see a Daniel Bryan till literally till he's coming out for his entrance. So I just that's my thing, what I understand. My thing was 
my thing with that storyline was, if that would have been in WWE, they'd have got a year out of that. They'd have got a year out of him, let Nigel McGuinness jump him, then let Daniel Bryan go away for a month or so. Yeah. Then, whilst he's away, let McGuinness just dog him on commentary. commentary. Yeah. Then have him come back, and then you could build to the match. Why isn't that match not on, like, why didn't they build it for a year for the next All Out or All In? I why, mean, why is it? Why you don't even have to months? do it a year. You know what I mean? You don't even have to do that. Like, you're right. You WWE probably would. You don't have to do it a year, but if you're trying to sell a stadium show. Yes. Yeah. Especially in in Wembley. Well, no, next year will not be in Wembley. But I think one uh, Forbidden Door or something next year is it might be in Wembley. I think they announced. But, like, think, yeah. That that's the thing is that Wrestle Dream is in October and they're running with Moxley Brian because Moxley beat uh Darby Allen and took his number one contender spot to face Brian. You tell me that couldn't wait? You tell me you couldn't or or not even do that. All right, do this, have the build, don't have the Nigel match. And after the Brian and Mox match, you have fucking Nigel come in and beat up a, a tired, beaten down Daniel or Brian Danielson. Like, there's ways you could have done it to where, all right, if you need to get Moxley Brian, if that right now is your focus, he's waited. <laughs> Nigel's waited 15 years for this match. He can wait another mm-hmm. month. Like, you know what I mean? He can, he can, like, it just, I feel like they, the one thing with AEW storytelling is everything is very rushed. Everything is, oh, we yeah. have this story. Okay, let's get this done. Let's do it here, here, and here. And then we'll have it pay off at this special dynamite that you like well, doing. The whole thing with Mox, because isn't this, I don't really pay attention, so I apologize, but isn't this the idea of once Daniel Bryan loses, he retires? Yes. Right. Well, we all know who's going to retire by the looks of it, who's going to retire Daniel Bryan. It's not Moxley. So why have you built up Moxley just to lose straight away? Yeah, that, especially with this new new Blackpool Combat Club they're kind of going with to where they turned on Brian and now it's uh, Marina Sharif. And if I know I'm probably butchering her last name. I can't I can't pronounce her last name. But uh, and then you have Claudio with him still. You have Pac now a part of it. Like you're just getting this build of this kind of new version of this faction and you're going to have Moxley lose. Like, do you, does anyone really think that Brian is going to lose on wrestle dream? My opinion. No, my opinion I th- just might be on. Sh- and I've, I've decided to say that because a lot of times I, I have ideas and I don't say them and they happen. Yeah. And then when you said, when you said, Oh, you predicted that people go, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I believe I believe the guy who's going to retire, Daniel Bryan, lost to Moxley. You think it's going to be Darby? You think he's going to have another think, another retirement match to, to put someone else out? I think Darby Allen wins the title. Oh, God. I can I, Look, Joe isn't even here to hear you say that. And I know as he watches this back, he's going to moan as he hears you say that. He's going to hate that so much. <laughs> I've, just got, I've just got a feeling because I, I read somewhere somewhere that they see him as the next guy. Oh, God. I just... I don't get it. I've, I don't... I've, got, a feel, I've got a feeling that it's, it's, it's going to be... They need an AEW original on top. Yeah, his name's MJF. I, <laughs> that's his, that's his that, name. I've, I've got I've got a feeling the blooms off that rose a bit. Really? Yeah. I mean, I look, I will say and I will agree I think there. whoever whoever suggested his baby face run mm-hmm. I think kind of stunted him. I don't know. I mean, not that his baby face run wasn't good. Because I thought he did a good job with it. But it was a generational ill. I agree. I, I completely agree. I think he is uh, exactly what you said. He is a generational heel. 
He is the best heel in wrestling when he won whenever he is a heel. He is. Absolutely. But uh, man, I don't know. Like the biggest, my opinion, the biggest detriment that MJF ever had was the devil storyline. Well, all right, let me okay. Now that you said that, why do you think that that is? Why do you think that? Because it was snake bit. Because as soon as they introduced that, both of the participants got injured. Mm-hmm. So couldn't really go forward with the storyline. Yeah. Everyone knew it was Adam Cole. Mm-hmm. There was no surprise that. And then all of a sudden you had someone who... Let me deviate this. In AEW, well, in WWE, sir, you've got amazing baby faces of now Roman, Coda, got LA Knight, you've got James, so you've got massive baby faces, a load of baby faces. Yes. You only had one true heel in wrestling, MJF. Mm-hmm. And I think the sacrifice trying to make him their big baby face, and it failed. I think at the time he was over as a baby face. Like, I don't think him as a baby. Here's I mean, the I question. Think, was, yeah. he, was he more over as a baby face than he ever was over as a heel? No. No. I'll give you that. No don't way. Do it. <laughs> I give you, all right. I mean, I see that. But I think in the overall scheme, I think you're right. It fa- the The entire thing failed afterwards and my kind of monday morning quarterback looking at it a- yeah aw it in my opinion aw in my opinion doesn't know when to keep someone a baby face or when to keep someone a heel swear strickland was a heel that got over as a baby face that they turned heel mm-hmm. and that turned back baby face yeah why i mean him turning babyface was more just listening to what the fans wanted. But they, it was a heel that broke into uh, Paige's house. Yeah. The fans turned him babyface. Yes. They then turned him heel to wrestle Daniel Bryan at Wembley. Yeah. To then turn him babyface against uh, Paige Hang again. Man. Yeah. Also, um, there were, uh, there's another one that they turned, and I, for, I forgot who it is now, but they turned someone else that's, and then they turned them back. Mm-hmm. Or you get people like Wardlow gets over on his own, not seen again. Wardlow um, is such a big fucking missed opportunity with Wardlow. I tell you, a bigger missed opportunity, Ricky Starks. Yeah. Yeah, and that might be a missed opportunity that goes to WWE, kind of like Jade. Mm, definitely, that might the, hurt them. Uh, is it the is it the acclaimed got over naturally as a baby face? One thousand percent. They're ready to win the titles, then nothing happened with them. Yeah, and now they're kind of. Uh, I, I don't know if you want to call them heels, but. They kind of have this edge to them. It's almost like AEW gets the talent gets momentum, and then the company can't keep it going. They don't know how to. Exactly. Uh, how many times do you see uh, an XW guarantee Lashley will have a good run, and then he'll he'll peter out. Yeah. Well, I mean that. Yeah. Well, Lashley you're... comes into AEW. You're right. I mean, that seems to be like you look at all the WWE guys, and now Adam Cole might be the exception because of the injury. Um, but if you look at anybody who has come over, and look, I'll even put, I'll even put Jericho in that. Jericho, even if you'd want to call him a WWE guy or not, which he is, but yes. when he first got there, he was the name to make them legitimate. It was the only name, really. Yeah, at that point, yes, absolutely. And mm. then you have the El Champion who, all right, I'll give him that. I'll give him that being over. I mean, look, you're selling champagne uh, off the shelves. So 
look, I'll give him that. But ever since then, he's kind of been this. I mean, look, he tried the the faction that was mediocre at best, and even the learning tree. I know that W or AEW fans like the learning tree. I just feel like any of his gimmicks or turns or whatever the hell you want to call him in AEW has all been very mediocre and just not the same feel as a, and it's hard to follow up a guy like the list of Jericho list of Jericho might be, if not the best up there with some of his best gimmicks that he has ever done. But like, it's just, it doesn't resonate with the typical wrestling fan that or anything. That's the difference. Do you think that's the differences between Tony Khan not producing him and WWE producing him? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I don't know if I want to put the blame on Jericho, but I mean, I think you feel I feel like you kind of have to. I don't. I don't think Tony Khan will say no to Chris Jericho. No, I, I, absolutely not. How how could he? You know what I mean? How how could someone in Tony Khan's position in wrestling say no to a Chris Jericho in? In the business of wrestling, it just it doesn't, mm. wouldn't make any sense. That's the difference I feel between. I think they do an interview where he said Triple H argued about the um, you know, when he turned on Kevin Owen, but uh, Kevin Owens turned on him. Yes, that was a backstage argument and how it should be done. Yeah, but Probably, he had yeah. someone in Triple H, possibly Vince McMahon, having creative conversation with. Tony Khan won't disagree with Jericho because he'll want Jericho to still be there. That's true. Yeah, but you know Realistically, what? Realistically, anybody's yeah. only... Oh, you want to get out of an AE, AEW contract, you just punch somebody. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you're not wrong. <laughs> like it's. I mean, That's where Miro went wrong. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, he didn't start a fight with anybody. I just, I feel like a guy like Jericho, uh, who's been in the business, I feel like he would respect someone like Tony Khan more if you fight against him, if you stand up for what you believe in. If you're like, no, this that's not going to work. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's the type of guy that a lot of, and and people that a lot of the wrestling veterans who've been around in WCW and WWE uh, and TNA for that matter, that that's all right. Show me you have some balls. Like show mm. me that, you know what I mean? That you have conviction, not just a guy who wants to hug you. Like he's an eight year old kid. You know what I mean? And so, so, so happy of, that you're there. So, so sort of argue about a point, even if you think, even if we both think it's wrong, argue the point instead of just saying, we'll do what you want, Chris. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Stand up, have some conviction, and be like, Even look, wrong. this is wrong. Yeah, absolutely. Stand on it with something you believe in, then stand up for it. Not, oh, you know what? Yeah, you're right. It doesn't matter what I think. You, you, mm-hmm. you know. Even though, yes, Jericho knows more about wrestling than to- and has forgot more about wrestling than Tony Khan probably knows. And don't get me wrong, Tony Khan's been a fan his whole life. So I know, and he's a student of the game, and I know he knows a lot of wrestling, but. Not inside wrestling, like you've been no. you've been inside wrestling for five years. Jericho's been inside wrestling for thirty or, or more. Mm. Like that's a big fucking difference. And also being around, not just been around wrestling for thirty years, the top level of wrestling yeah. for thirty years. Yeah, yeah. Even ECW was. Can you argue that ECW as so of even? 20 years after it's finished has been more culturally impact than so far AEW for what it started in a revolution. No, well, yeah, absolutely it has. But you I could mean, argue that ECW helps the Attitude Era, oh, which is seen as the biggest fucking generation of wrestling ever. Yeah, next to the one we're living right now. Yeah. Yeah. And whoever thought we would say that, you know what I mean? Yeah. From what the Attitude more Era expensive. was. Yeah. Fifty fifty thousand dollars for a front row seat at WrestleMania. Dude, did you did yeah, is that what the numbers that just came out this week, right? Fifty thousand, yeah. I think it, I don't know if it's for 
even if it's like for two nights, it's still twenty five grand a fucking ticket. Yeah, I heard fifty. I heard fifty for front row and like thirty five for second row for Vegas for WrestleMania forty one. Yeah, it's it's crazy. They they were attitude ever numbers. Yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, I would love to. Actually, that's a that's a good point. I would love to take, like. What what would you, I mean? What would be the biggest mania in Attitude Era? Like what? Seventeen. I was. I, that's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say seventeen. If you just took numbers and looked at what the front row ticket price at WrestleMania seventeen was, and of course you'd have to convert it to what today's money would be. You know what I mean? And see what that equivalent the equivalent would be to what now we, we just said fifty thousand for WrestleMania. I don't think it would come close. I don't think the equivalent would I come it, close. I think it'd be relatively expensive, but I don't think you'd have to remortgage your fucking house. <laughs> yeah, there's no way. I mean, they're like they're like box office, like boxing UFC fight kind of prices. Surely they're gonna. They, surely the prices are to get celebrities in the front row. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because surely the normal everyday person can't afford twenty five grand. Well, uh, the, I, the funny, grand. the thing I seen with the prices was the prices, and then a picture of the green shirt guy. You know who I'm talking about for mm. WWE. Uh, mm. They were like. Prices are this, this, and this, and you know we're going to see this dude at front row at Media Forty One, like this, someone like that. How the how how do you how do you afford that it's kind of crazy. those tickets? Not to mention travel and hotel and all that to to do that. Like I couldn't even I couldn't even imagine. I be, I I also believe that like the cheap. I might be wrong here, but I'm sure for the class at the last class at the castle. That mm-hmm. was in Scotland. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sure the cheapest ticket over here was about three hundred pounds. Was the cheapest ticket, which might be around about four fifty dollars. Yours, okay. Now over here, three hundred pounds is a lot of fucking money. Yeah, for a ticket. Yeah, but they all went, so people bought them. Yeah. So people saying, oh, they're so expensive. They can't be too expensive if people buy them and it sell out everywhere. Yeah. I mean, look, we went to we went to Mania. We went second night of Mania. We paid, I don't know, $360 a ticket. You know what I mean? Like, and that was but you could but you could turn around and say that you were live at Pravel at the best WrestleMania <laughs> main event ever. <laughs> yes yeah which i mean doesn't hurt but it doesn't put money back in my bank account but not true i mean yeah and we were eight or nine rows off of the last row as far as down mm. like we were the, the last obviously last section or last level which is the the 300 level and it was yeah we were like eight to nine rows from the top and it was 340 350 dollars a ticket you know what I mean? Like those kind of prices, and don't get me wrong. I, I mean, I was like, I don't care. Like my get my my mine was probably about. I won't spend more than five hundred. Like anything below five hundred, all right, I'll I'll spend. But like you're talking with that kind of money, what what if it comes back to Philadelphia? Would I go? I don't know if I would go again. <laughs> like I, I like. Would it depend on what? Would it depend on what the show was? Maybe like if it was a Rumble WrestleMania as opposed to a uh, Money in the Bank kind of thing. Yeah, uh, like well, a lot of the arena stuff and even Monday Night Raw is coming back in October uh, to Philly, and like that's one thing me and Joe agree on. It's like, eh, it's like unless unless like the one thing we said we'll go to Raw or SmackDown, whatever it is, is for. Is if seen as it's seen as last time in Philly, if seen as last match in Philly comes and it's in the arena where the Flyers and Sixers play their games, if it's in the arena, we'll go to that just because it's John Cena's last in Philly. But other than that, usually Raw and SmackDown roll around. We typically don't go. Uh, I mean, we'll go. Like I've been to Money in the Bank. I've been to TLC. I've been to Royal Rumble. 
uh don't think I've ever been to a Survivor series, but like in the arena stuff, like nah, it's it just uh, like a mania was because it was mania and because of where I knew mm. eventually it was going to end up, which is why we bought night two. Cause we knew we were going to get Cody Roman, but to pay those kind of prices, prices for tickets, it blows me away. And, and you're right. I mean, people, people will do it. I mean, I don't want to like be all for social for tickets, but if it ever does come to Wembley and it is WrestleMania at Wembley, it's never coming back. Yeah. You're never going to do another one. Yeah. So it's kind of like you've got to swallow whatever money it is and just sit at the fucking bleachers because it's never going to come back again. Yes. Yeah. And if it does, I mean, it's going to be when you're old 92? and gray. Yeah. How long since 92? Since yeah. SummerSlam? Yeah. It's Over never the- coming back to another one. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. We uh, might get a we might get a money in the bank or something like that, but it's not WrestleMania. It's not a yeah. Royal Rumble. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, look, and this the what WWE WWE has been building recently, um, and we talked about a little bit on our our last episode. That I would love to get your thoughts on the Roman Cody stare down in Georgia Tech Stadium that they just did. Um, the Not movie, the, yeah, yeah. The the cinema that we got to watch two two Fridays ago, as of right now, uh, I mean, it was absolutely visually stunning. And then just the promos themselves were ridiculous. Would you say that's WrestleMania? What is this year? Thirty forty one. Forty one. I think you can say that's probably WrestleMania forty two. That's all the WrestleMania 42 or it's mm-hmm. 43. Because you could make a case of Rock versus Cody this WrestleMania, mm-hmm. Rock and Roman next WrestleMania, Cody, Roman, year after. Jesus Christ. That's because I don't think I don't think it'd be I don't think it'd be Rock and Roman this year. You don't think so? No, I don't, because I think The Rock will want the he'll want the main event with Cody and win the belt. Hmm. Also, I, I'd like to ask your opinion on this. Actually, do you know the the head of the table and the tribal chief? Hmm. The two different things, aren't they? Um, I mean, it appears because that- I thought I thought that. Roman was uh, feuding against Solo for the I'm the tribal chief. I thought then when it comes to Rock and Roman, they would pivot to I'm the head of the table. I'm the the big dog of the family. Mm -hmm. Because I thought that, because I didn't know whether they were two of the same thing. There's a different way of naming them. I don't know. I'm pretty, uh, that's a good question because I mean, well, Roman, that build with Roman as the tribal chief, he was the tribal chief and the head of the team. It was one in the I same. Because I just wondered, are they going to pivot? Are they going to pivot to these are two separate things? Because Solo's not the the head of the table, and also he's never referenced being the head of the table. He's referenced being the tribal chief. I mean, that's a good point. You're right. He, it, you're right. It's always been tribal chief. He's never said head of the table. Where Roman, Roman has always said tribal chief or head of the table. Uh, I, I mean the the impression that I get. Just remember, from... remember the promo when the Rock came out and did. You want me to sit in a? I'm going to go for something to eat. You want me to sit in a booth, or yes. should I sit at the head of the table? He never says I'm the tribal chief. Yeah, he says I'm the head of the table. I don't know. I think the way WWE presents it, I think it's one in the same. The way they're no, at right. least the way they're presenting it. Now, I guess someone of Samoan descent could t- could clarify that, but as it's being presented to us, I would say that's the same thing. Now, you're right. Solo has never claimed that. Solo has always claimed tribal chief. He's never said head of the table. But I, I don't know. I think it's implied with the tribal chief. You know what I mean? But 
that's interesting. I've never even I've never even put that together. You know what I mean? That it possibly so being two separate. When, when I go when I go for this, obviously I I suffer from my you know uh, mental health issues at times. But when I go, I like to like think. And I thought, is are they the same thing? And I just don't know. <laughs> or the different things. Yeah. Because it's like he never says, I thought they're like the oh what a father is it? Yes. Yeah. Thing. I thought that was, oh, I'm the tribal chief. Yeah. And the they, they were going to pivot to you maybe the tribal chief now, but you're not the head of the table. This is now the Hollywood star that's going back to the Fast and Furious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, no, it's a good question. I mean, like I said. It's the only thing I've I've always thought of being the same thing, but that's a very good question. You know what I mean? To if they were going to go back to Rock Roman, if that was going to be, oh, they're going back. Do you know how I would book it? Okay, I'm listening. I would build up war games, and you've got the four of the new bloodline. Mm -hmm. Get the Usos back together. You got mm -hmm. Roman. Then say. I'm going to make a call, make Roman get The Rock to come back, make it look like The Rock's turned baby face to defend his family. The Rock comes in last in the war games, just beats the fuck out of Roman, and then you build to Mania. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people, us included, were uh, well, maybe two months ago, maybe July, July in... in probably June, July, we're thinking that we were going to get the new bloodline against oh. Roman and his bloodline, like you said, Jay, Jimmy, even maybe even including Sami Zayn uh, and The Rock kind of get, coming out at SummerSlam, or SummerSlam, at Survivor Series, and this War Games match that looks like bloodline War Games, and then, yes, feuding with Roman going forward because helping the new bloodline. Um, I, I think that's what we were thinking as well. Now it kind of looks like this, it, it could be leaning towards a Roman super team as far as him, Cody, Randy, KO, you know what I mean? And maybe Jay, uh, uh, depending on how this looks. I did see Rakishi put out a tweet asking for prayers for Jimmy. So I don't know if something medically is is wrong with Jimmy Uso. No, I think there were report that somebody reached out and there's there's nothing wrong. Whether that's kayfabe and there is something wrong, I don't know. Yeah, so I I don't know. There, Jay is a hard one because now he's your intercontinental champion. He's doing amazing, like you said, as a as a baby face. And do they want to kind of take that main event Jay Uso out of that realm and bring him back to a bloodline story is yet to be seen. Well, you know, the reason I thought they definitely would get the Usos back together, because that's why I thought they put the belts on Tama Tonga and, um, I forget his name. Tonga Loa. Yes, thank you. I thought it was going to be them versus the Usos at Mania, the Usos win the titles. Okay. Because I don't think they would have had uh, Jacob Fatu lose at WrestleMania. Uh, yeah, I mean... Or I not mean, in that sense. situation, the tag anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah I... You know what would be good? You know what would be good at WrestleMania? Usos versus Tongans. Sami Zayn versus Jacob Fatu. See, I love... I don't know. Like, I love Sami Zayn, but... The styles now, granted, it, it would you're right, it would be a great match. I'm not arguing against that. Yes, it would be an amazing match. But the one I'm still waiting for, and I want them to give it time, I want to give them the match time is Fatu versus KO because of Don't their... you th I think they're going to be on the same side soon in the fact that they're both going to be heels. I fucking hope not. <laughs> I, I'm tired. He Kevin Owens is becoming like Big Show with the heel face turns, and what what's the next major show? The next uh, like Survivor Series, SummerSlam. Is it Survivor Series? Yeah, yeah. Good one. Kevin got... Owens is a heel. Kevin Owens is a heel before Survivor Series ends. Really? Yeah, I think Royal Rumble possibly might be KO versus Cody. 
Hmm. I hope you're wrong. <laughs> I hope you're wrong. I, I hope, hope I'm wrong. <laughs> um, well, the, there's too yeah. much tease in a heel turn for it not to happen. Yeah, no, I, I see why you think that. I get that. Um, yeah, I, I want I want Fatu KO very, very badly just because they're two big dudes that are insanely athletic. And the, what's the word I'm looking for? The aggression that they fight with and the ev- aggression in their matches them two going head to head for give me a solid 20 27 minute match could be amazing now you're right like i said sammy zane and 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 fatu are amazing because you have the baby face in sammy zane who can take all that punishment and still believable to beat a fatu as well but yeah, I, selfishly, I've been waiting for a showdown between Fatu and K.O. Is this the most... I mean, we're not really there yet. Is this the most unpredictable WrestleMania season to WrestleMania? Yeah. Where you could make an argument for about five different main events. Yes. Well, I mean, and we said this... Actually, the funny thing is, aside from Roman Cody, um, which I think everyone figured was going to happen at 40 until the Rock thing happened for a while, but... Mm. Until that, like that was the same. We were saying the same thing last year. Was man, what what is it going to be? Like how? Because you had the Cody Roman, you had a bunch of different things to where it looked like you had no idea where this was going. And but I think now more so, like you said, than last year is now. It's look, you're you can still depending on when Seth comes back, you still have CM mm-hmm. Punk Seth down the pike. You still right. have that. I've got a question for you, and it's kind of so fancy, but question. Night two is always seen as the big box office night two main event. Correct. Question. What do you think the main event will be? And also, what do you want it to be? <laughs> um, what do you think they will do? And what do you want it to be? Because usually there are two, that, that those, it, those instances are different. <laughs> Usually, most fans, it's Ooh. different. Um, the way that they're going, I'm hoping that Cody is still the champ at that point. It will and... be. It will be. I'm going to still... I don't know. I... I'm going to say Rock Roman, honestly. I think they right. will. I think they will go with Rock Roman. I think it will be – I'm going to be selfish here. I'm going to tell you why I, I don't think it will be Rock Roman. I'm mm-hmm. going to be selfish. I think, it'd be, I think it will be Cody Rock, but I would prefer it to be Rock and Roman. But selfishly, I hope it's next year when hopefully we get WrestleMania at Wembley. <laughs> um, I get that. <laughs> I – I think, me personally, I thought as soon as the fans chose Cody over The Rock, just how my mind works, it's like, yeah, The Rock's going to beat him for the belt. It's not going to be anybody else. It's going to, Rock will beat him for the belt. Hmm. Maybe Cody wins the People's Championship. Yeah, because that thing means anything. (laughs) It means a lot. It means a lot to The Rock. It means a lot to the people. And who are we if we don't listen to the fucking people in this world? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I think this year will be Rock and uh, Coda. I don't hmm. know what Ray, what Roman would do. Ray, I, is it too long to get Roman and Solo? Is that too? You're stretching that too far out. Is it? Is it Reigns and um, Jacob Fatu? I think that would maybe be more possible than solo, but then again, a lot lot would have to happen. How long till Mania? From now? Yeah. Talking six months? I mean, six months and they're already wrestling. It's a lot. This is where I think how the fuck do you get to Rhea winning against Liv at Mania? Because I would imagine that's when they do it. I don't know how long... I don't know how long Liv can hold that title away from Rhea. I don't know if she can make it to Mania. Well, she's she's going to win at Bad Blood. Mm-hmm. 
because uh, I think they'll have... Uh, is it Raquel or Rachel? How do you pronounce the name? Gonzalez? Or yeah. Rodriguez? Well, uh, I forget. She, she I don't know. switched her name. But yeah, what, I know who you're talking about. With? It's Raquel. Yeah. I think she... I think they probably introduce her into it and kind of pivot Rhea off. Okay. Kind of pivot Rhea off and then come back to live. Because hmm. otherwise, what the fuck do you do with Rhea at Mania? Because it's yeah. a long fucking way off. Yeah, it's a, yeah. I mean, seven months is a long fucking time in wrestling. Unless you're gonna do an injury angle and she gets put out for three and comes back at the rumble. Yeah. Do you think that's a detriment to these long these long title reigns? That the only now change hands on big shows like WrestleMania. Uh I think it can be a good and bad thing. I, I I mean I, I think you can go either way depending on the like and look again depending on the story depending on how long you can keep people invested and this Triple H era uh, it, it seems that they've had no problem no issues doing that uh, but the, obviously that the big title is the main one that they've done it with but now you're getting more and more long term story look at look at McIntyre Punk. Look at oh. at the Judgment Day with with Rhea and and Liv and Dom and that triangle. Like so, more and more it's happening. You got all over the place. Look at Braun. Even look Braun Strowman and 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 uh, and Bronson Reed. Like that that has been running now for a, well over a month, if not a little bit more. Like I think that this is now going to be that era. It's the multiple multiple month build regardless of title or not i think that's where it's going and i'm fine with that i think keep me invested keep me watching weekly and and wanting to tune in you're also going to have the john cena retirement to a year yes exactly there's another i mean look to talk about mania there's another one that you have to add to the list of night i don't think he'll be night two but night one yes or no yes or no randy Orton cena Cena, Gunther. Which one, or both? Which happening? one would you like? Um, I would lean more towards Cena, Orton because you have the backstory. I personally, I would have the WrestleMania be having beat Gunther for the title. Mm -hmm. Beats the record, doesn't it? Yeah. And then he drops it to Randy Orton at a show. Hmm. I mean, he would definitely do it. We can't keep it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously. Uh, I don't know, but I don't know how that works because it's the it's the World Heavyweight Championship, and he's always won the WWE. Hmm. Like, I, I, I think that might be semantics. Uh, yeah, I agree. I, I agree. <clears throat> I agree. Well, there's so. a there's a part of me that th there's a part of me that thinks he doesn't win it again. I don't think he'll want to. Yeah, I'm back and forth. Uh, I'm back and forth on that as well. Uh, but I, I knowing WWE the way they the way they are and how they operate, I feel like you're they're going to want Cena to be above Ric Flair, even though Ric Flair is like 21 times, even though they don't recognize it. Um, I think no. in WWE, Ric Flair's recognized as 16. And I think they're going to want a John Cena as that name. Uh, Cause I can't see anyone else at this point <clears throat> getting to Isn't that. Isn't Orton I mean, too off it? Isn't Orton yeah. too off it? Yes. Orton has, Orton is a uh, 14. Right. Yeah. So two to, two to match it, not two yes. to break it. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right, so he, he realistically, with the time left, Randy Orton's not going to beat that then. Yeah, I don't think so. I I, I no, just not gonna win. I think it's Cena. I think it's Cena. I think it's going to happen eventually. How I have no idea. Um, one last thing that I wanted to talk about because it's coming up very quickly, and actually this Tuesday night is is the start of it. NXT will be on CW Network. Uh. And I saw that they're listed now at a TV 14 rating. So they're stepping up their rating, going to get a little bit more racy on NXT. 
you have WWE in January, Monday Night Raw in January, going to Netflix that is supposedly not having a rating and going back to two hours like when we were kids and watching Raw mm. in two hours, eight to ten. What do you think of WWE doing this with their shows? First, obviously, NXT now going to TV 14. And then Netflix, we don't know what the if 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 there is kind of ratings on Netflix, I don't know, but from all the talk that Monday oh, Night yeah. Raw Monday Night Raw is is going to be able to do basically whatever the hell they want. So is that official then? Raw is back to two hours. Yes. I mean, if if they want to make it retro for people in the UK, they should put it on on Fridays. Because that's <laughs> when Raw used to come on in the attitude ever on a Friday. Wow. It, isn't it amazing that Raw could be live in America on the Monday, we get it aired on the Friday, and you don't know all week what's happened because there's no internet. Yeah, yeah, because that couldn't happen now. No, you it it they tell you what happens right after the match finishes online. Yes, yeah. But all it all they getting a lot more stars like uh motor ship machine guns is going. They're supposed to go into NXT. Uh, NXT. Or I was gonna say the Lucha Brothers, but it's Pentagon at NXT. No. Well, the original rumors were that they were going main, straight to main roster. Uh now I heard that. AEW has tacked on injury time to Phoenix's contract, which is about four, five or six months. So I don't know if we're going to be seeing Lucha Brothers for a while uh, with WWE. He should just put Jack Perry in a headlock at Dynamite. Yeah. <laughs> just put Jack Perry in a headlock, lunge at Tony Khan, you'll be out like now. Yeah, make him fear for his life. And they'll be Fair good. For his life. Yeah. <laughs> but I I think what they'll do is they'll they'll make it more the less like the original NXT, you know, like the Hunter NXT with Sami Zayn, Kevin Owen, less like that. And I think they'll make it more kind of OVW when the Undertaker would drop in and do a show, and Austin would come down. They would make it more like you'll see a lot more regulars. From the main roster jumping back and forth. Some of the NXT don't go don't they go to TNA? Um, they've had one or two. I think Regal's son showed up there. Charlie Dempsey, he showed up there for something. I think a couple other people um of the lower kind of the, the mid card of NXT kind of went over a couple times. TNA has come over to NXT a lot more than WWE or NXT has gone to them. Um, and uh, and look, obviously so, WWE has the bigger platform. NXT is the bigger platform. They're on a better station than than TNA is at this point. Um, like you have the Joe Hendry, you have Trey Miguel and Zachary Wentz, uh, formerly the Rascals. You have uh, the women. <laughs> Excuse me. You have a Jordan Grace who's come over multiple times. They all have times. that effect on us all. What's that? They have that effect on us all, the women. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I mean, like it, it's it, it. They've definitely come. Obviously, more TNA has come over, but I I think adding a TV fourteen to NXT, letting them be a little bit more edgy. That I, I've I've said it a thousand times on this show. NXT is my favorite weekly wrestling show. Period. Over SmackDown, over Raw well over AEW. It is just, as far as consistency goes, in matches, in storytelling, they are just, they're, they're fucking phenomenal. And uh, anyone who's not watching should definitely watch, because it's just, it, it's consistent. It, it's, I mean, Shawn Michaels and the staff that are do, they're doing and the writing staff is very, very good. It's hard to watch an NXT program and not be entertained, whether it's in ring or story, it, it's it's ridiculous. So them adding a TB fourteen is, I mean, it is what it. Look, I, I don't care that it's whatever it's rated now, whether it's P, the PG or whatever it's rated now. I haven't noticed it doesn't affect the product. So TB fourteen, all right, what are you, you going to be able to add some blood? Is there some words that you can use differently now? Okay, cool. Maybe that'll help for some effect. Same thing with Netflix and not being censored. 
Like, are we going to get more blood? Uh, cool. Uh, as long as it's in the right spot. I don't need a John Moxley special, uh, you know what I mean, every Monday night just because we can do blood. I don't need F words just because you can say fuck. Like, I, I that, that doesn't, I'm not, I'm not 15. Like, that doesn't appeal to me. Like, well, the, least, attitude, the attitude error, the attitude error, nobody swore more than Steve Austin. He never mentioned fuck. Yeah. And realistically, when you look back at Raw, not many times with the blood, really. Yeah. On Raw. Yeah. But maybe leading up to the pay per view, they have that Austin would get color, but it wasn't a constant every week blood. Yeah. So I don't think good shows mean swearing and blood. ECW never had blood every week on their TV. Yeah. Yeah, they did crazy shit. Mm. But there, there wasn't like it was a bloodbath every week. No. Yeah, I'm I'm excited the way from where wrestling has gone or has been to where now it's going. Even even look, even AEW, if AEW, all this stuff, all the rumors, because nothing ever has been official yet. But if their new deal is what it is, if they're really getting what everyone's saying it is and they're going to their pay-per-views are going to be on Max and stuff like that, like good more like. I know the knocks on AEW. Look, we've we've said them here on this show plenty of times. Like, but wrestling and there are things out there for people that there might not be for others. AEW is not for guys of our age, include and Joe included in that R. Uh, but there are still things that entertain me on AEW. I still find things that entertain me. Look, Nigel and and Brian, as as disappointing as I was with the story being as short as it was. The match delivered tenfold. It was a great match. I'd much rather have been it at a pay-per-view. I, I I think it's stupid you gave it away on free TV, but I mean that doesn't kind of matter these days. But like the match itself was fucking great. And that's what AEW does. Oh. They do good dream matches. They do great matches, but it just there are certain things. I want wrestling to get better. I don't want AEW out of business. I don't want that to happen. More wrestling the better for me. Not so much my wife. She wouldn't want more wrestling. But I mean, more wrestling. Give me wrestling seven days a week, which it already almost is. Uh, like this wrestling, being a wrestling fan right now, we are so fucking spoiled as as we know, uh, having to wait on a Monday. Or look, you had to wait till a Friday when it happened on Monday in the Attitude Era. You know what I mean? Like it, the attitude, the Attitude Era in the UK used to be, if I remember I, it was Friday at ten o'clock till twelve, and Nitro would come on uh, nine o'clock while eleven, so it would overlap. Yeah. So I would watch the first hour of Nitro. And then turn over for Raw. Yeah. So they were on the same night. We didn't have the Monday night wars. We had the Friday night wars. Yeah. <laughs> That's it funny. Was on, it was on Friday. And then when SmackDown come along, you had Raw Friday night. And then SmackDown was on, at, I want to say 10 o'clock Saturday morning. Wow. So basically you had Raw and SmackDown Friday, Saturday. Huh. Like Friday night. And then you would go to bed and get up. SmackDown would on. I, I clearly remember SmackDown with the you know, Eddie Guerrero, Chris Benoit, Kurt Angle. That yeah. was on Sky One on like ten o'clock in the morning. So wow. you would get up, I school, and it was on TV then. <sighs> then you had to wait a full till Friday. Because <laughs> I hated, I hated school, and every day I was like, "Just get me to Friday." Rolls on <laughs> Friday, get me to Friday. You know, and then. Friday at 10, Bosh. <laughs> oh, man, I couldn't even imagine. But yeah, we are we are so incredibly spoiled to have wrestling, as much wrestling as we have. And uh, I can't wait to see what 2025 brings. We have the Cena Retirement Tour. We have all these new TV deals, and I mean, AEW and WWE going to Netflix. And this is it's just getting better and better. Uh, so, Eggy, thank you so much. It was great talking to you. Great seeing you. Um, I'm sorry that it was only me. We couldn't. You would have been much, That's much fine. more insults, much more insults if we had Joe here with us. But 
But I mean, it was still great talking to you. Always fun talking wrestling with you. So thank you once again for being being on the show with me. Thanks for having me. All right. So we hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, we'll be talking to you very soon. Thank you again for watching and listening. And as always, don't take any shit from anybody. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs>